New driving theory test. Practice test number two. One. Why is it unwise to follow this vehicle too closely? A. Your brakes will overheat. B. But your engine will overheat. C. Your view ahead will be increased. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Correct answer. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Explanation. Staying back will increase your view of the road ahead. This will help you to see any hazards that might occur and give you more time to react. 2. In windy conditions, which activity requires extra care? A. Moving off on a hill. B. Passing pedal cyclists. C. Turning into a narrow road. D. Using the brakes. Correct answer. B. Passing pedal cyclists. Explanation. Always give cyclists plenty of room when overtaking them. You need to give them even more room when it's windy. A sudden gust could easily blow them off course and into your path. 3. What must you do at this junction? A. Stop behind the line. Then edge forward to see clearly. B. Stop beyond the line at a point where you can see clearly. C. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. D. Stop only if you're turning right. Correct answer. A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Explanation. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. 4. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? A. By displaying a stop sign. B. By displaying a red light. C. By giving you an arm signal. D. By pointing to children on the opposite pavement. Correct answer. A. By displaying a stop sign. Explanation. If a school crossing patrol steps out into the road with a stop sign, you must stop. Don't wave anyone across the road and don't get impatient or rev your engine. 5. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which one of these signs would make you take special care? The correct answer, A. Explanation, in windy weather. Watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. 6. You're traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or a climbing lane? A. Along the hard shoulder. B. Before a junction. C. Before a service area. D. On a steep gradient. Correct answer. D. On a steep gradient. Explanation. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient. An extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. 7. What color are the reflective studs between a motorway and its slip road? A. Amber. B. Green. C. Red. D. White. Correct answer. B. Green. Explanation. The studs between the carriageway and the hard shoulder are normally red. These change to green where there's a slip road helping you to identify slip roads when visibility is poor or when it's dark. 8. You see street lights but no speed limit signs. What will the speed limit usually be? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. D. 60 miles per hour. Correct answer. A. 30 miles per hour. Explanation. The presence of street lights generally indicates that there's a 30 miles per hour speed limit, unless signs tell you otherwise. 9. When may you stop and wait in a box junction? A. When oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. B. When you're in a queue of traffic going ahead. C. When you're in a queue of traffic turning left. D. When you're on a roundabout. Correct answer, A. When oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. Explanation. The purpose of yellow box markings is to keep junctions clear of queuing traffic. 
You may only wait in the marked area when you're turning right and your exit lane is clear but you can't complete a turn because of oncoming traffic or other traffic waiting to turn right. 10. Which of these signs means there's a double bend ahead? The correct answer, the explanation, triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They're there to give you time to prepare for the hazard, for example, by adjusting your speed. 11. You see a car on the hard shoulder of a motorway with a help pennant displayed. What does this mean? A. The driver is a foreign visitor. B. The driver is a rescue patrol officer. C. The driver is first aid trained. D. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. Correct answer. D. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. Explanation. If a disabled driver's vehicle breaks down and they're unable to walk to an emergency phone, they're advised to stay in their car and switch on the hazard warning lights. They may also display a help pennant in their vehicle. 12. You've broken down on a motorway. In which direction should you walk to find the nearest emergency telephone? A. Facing oncoming traffic. B. In the direction of the nearest exit. C. In the direction shown on the marker posts. D. With the traffic flow. Correct answer. C. In the direction shown on the marker posts. Explanation. Along the hard shoulder there are marker posts at 100 meter intervals. These will direct you to the nearest emergency telephone. 13. You see a horse rider as you approach a roundabout. What should you do if they're signaling right but keeping well to the left? A. Cut in front of them. B. Keep close to them. C. Proceed as normal. D. Stay well back. Correct answer, D. Stay well back. Explanation. Allow the horse rider to enter and exit the roundabout in their own time. They may feel safer keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Don't get up close behind or alongside them, because that would probably upset the horse and create a dangerous situation. 14. You're traveling on a road that has speed humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? A. Flash your headlights. B. Overtake as soon as you can. C. Slow down and stay behind. D. Sound your horn. Correct answer. C. Slow down and stay behind. Explanation. Be patient and stay behind the car in front. You shouldn't normally overtake other vehicles in areas subject to traffic calming. If you overtake here, you may easily exceed the speed limit, defeating the purpose of the traffic calming measures. 15. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and hard to see. How do they give early warning when on a dual carriageway? A. They'll have a flashing amber light. B. They'll have a flashing blue light. C. They'll have a flashing green light. D. They'll have a flashing red light. Correct answer, A. They'll have a flashing amber light. Explanation, powered vehicles used by disabled people are small, low, hard to see and travel very slowly. On a dual carriageway, a flashing amber light will warn other road users. 16. Other drivers may sometimes flash their headlights at you. In which situation are they allowed to do this? A. To let you know there's a fault with your vehicle. B. To show that they're giving way to you. C. To warn of a radar speed trap ahead. D. To warn you of their presence. Correct answer. D. To warn you of their presence. Explanation. If other drivers flash their headlights, this isn't a signal to show priority. The flashing of headlights has the same meaning as sounding the horn. It's a warning of their presence. 17. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car, arrowed, should be aware of? A. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. B. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. C. The black car may stop suddenly. D. The bus may move out into the road. Correct answer. D. 
the bus may move out into the road. Explanation, if you can do so safely, give way to buses signaling to move off at bus stops. Try to anticipate the actions of other road users around you. The driver of the red car should be prepared for the bus pulling out. As you approach a bus stop, look to see how many passengers are waiting to board. If the last one has just got on, the bus is likely to move off. 18. What's the main hazard you should be aware of when following this cyclist? A. The contents of the cyclist's carrier may fall onto the road. B. The cyclist may move to the left and dismount. C. The cyclist may swerve into the road. D. The cyclist may wish to turn right at the end of the road. Correct answer. C. The cyclist may swerve into the road. Explanation. When following a cyclist, be aware that they have to deal with the hazards around them. They may wobble or swerve to avoid a pothole in the road or see a potential hazard and change direction suddenly. Don't follow them too closely or rev your engine impatiently. 19. What's the purpose of these road markings? A. To enable parents to pick up or drop off children safely. B. To enable teachers to have clear access to the school. C. To ensure children have a clear view from the crossing area. D. To ensure delivery vehicles have easy access to the school. Correct answer. C. To ensure children have a clear view from the crossing area. Explanation. These markings are found on the road outside schools. Don't stop or park on them, even to set down or pick up children. The markings are there to ensure that drivers, riders, children and other pedestrians have a clear view of the road in all directions. 20. What should you do when you're approaching a bus that's signaling to move away from a bus stop? A. Allow it to pull away, if it's safe to do so. B. Flash your headlights as you approach. C. Get past before it moves. D. Signal left and wave the bus on. Correct answer. A. Allow it to pull away, if it's safe to do so. Explanation. Try to give way to buses if you can do so safely. Especially when the driver signals to pull away from a bus stop. Look out for people getting off the bus or running to catch it because they may cross the road without looking. Don't accelerate to get past the bus and don't flash your lights as this could mislead other road users. 21. What should you do as you approach this lorry? A. Flash your light to the lorry. B. Make the lorry wait for you. C. Move to the right-hand side of the road. D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Correct answer. D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Explanation. When turning, long vehicles need much more room on the road than other vehicles. At junctions, they may take up the whole of the road space, so be patient and allow them the room they need. 22. On a motorway, when should the hard shoulder be used? A. When an emergency arises. B. When answering a mobile phone. C. When checking a road map. D. When taking a short rest. Correct answer. A. When an emergency arises. Explanation. The hard shoulder should only be used in a genuine emergency. If possible, and if it's safe, use a roadside telephone to call for help. This will give your exact location to the operator. Never cross the carriageway or a slip road to use a telephone on the other side of the road. 23. Why can it be an advantage for traffic speed to stay constant over a longer distance? A. You'll be able to use more direct routes. B. You'll do more stop-start driving. C. You'll use far more fuel. D. Your overall journey time will normally improve. Correct answer. D. Your overall journey time will normally improve. Explanation. When traffic travels at a constant speed over a longer distance. Journey times normally improve. You may feel that you could travel faster for short periods, but this generally leads to bunching and increased overall journey time. 24. You're on a dual carriageway. 
Ahead, you see a vehicle with an amber flashing light. What could this be? A. A disabled person's vehicle. B. A doctor on call. C. A fire engine. D. An ambulance. Correct answer. A. A disabled person's vehicle. Explanation. An amber flashing light on a vehicle indicates that it's slow moving. Battery-powered vehicles used by disabled people are limited to 8 miles per hour. It isn't advisable for them to be used on dual carriageways where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour. If they are, then an amber flashing light must be used. 25. What must you have when you apply to renew your vehicle excise license? A. A valid driving license. B. The handbook. C. The vehicle's chassis number. D. Valid insurance. Correct answer. D. Valid insurance. Explanation. The vehicle excise license road tax can be renewed at post offices, vehicle registration offices, online or by phone. When applying, make sure you have all the relevant valid documents, including a valid MOT test certificate where applicable. 26. In an incident, it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? A. Ask them how it happened. B. Give them something to eat. C. Keep them where they are. D. Move them away from the vehicles. Correct answer. C. Keep them where they are. Explanation. When the area is safe and there's no danger from other traffic or fire, it's better not to move casualties. Moving them may cause further injury. 27. In an incident, what should you do with a casualty who has stopped breathing? A. Keep their head tilted forwards as far as possible. B. The raise their legs to help with circulation. C. Remove anything that's blocking their airway. D. Try to give them something to drink. Correct answer. C. Remove anything that's blocking their airway. Explanation. Unblocking the casualty's airway and gently tilting their head back will help them to breathe. They'll then be in the correct position if mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is required. Don't move the casualty unless there's further danger. 28. You're at the scene of an incident. Someone is suffering from shock. How should you treat them? A. Give them a warm drink. B. Offer them a cigarette. C. Offer them some food. D. Reassure them confidently. Correct answer. D. Reassure them confidently. Explanation. If someone is suffering from shock, try to keep them warm and as comfortable as you can. Don't give them anything to eat or drink but reassure them confidently and try not to leave them alone. 29. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? A. Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. C. Move closer to the car head, so the driver behind has no room to overtake. D. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. Correct answer. B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Explanation. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. 30. There's a bus lane on your left. The signs show no times of operation. What does this mean? A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. Correct answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and also its times of operation. Where no times are shown. The bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. 31. What's the main cause of brake fade? A. Air in the brake fluid. B. Oil on the brakes. C. The brakes out of adjustment. D. The brakes are overheating. Correct answer. D. 
The brakes are overheating. Explanation. Brakes can overheat and lose efficiency when they're used continually, such as on a long, steep, downhill stretch of road. Using a lower gear when you drive downhill can help prevent the vehicle from gaining speed. 32. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? A. Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. B. Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. C. Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Correct answer. D. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Explanation. When driving down a steep hill, gravity will cause your vehicle to speed up. This will make it more difficult for you to stop. To help keep your vehicle's speed under control, select a lower gear to give you more engine braking and make careful use of the brakes. 33. During periods of illness, your ability to drive may be impaired. What must you do? A. Make sure you're medically fit to drive. B. See your doctor each time before you drive. C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. Correct answer. A. Make sure you're medically fit to drive. Explanation. Only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. 34. You're driving on the motorway in windy conditions. What should you do as you pass a high-sided vehicle? A. Be wary of a sudden gust. B. Drive alongside very closely. C. Expect normal conditions. D. Increase your speed. Correct answer. A. Be wary of a sudden gust. Explanation. The drought caused by other vehicles, particularly those with high sides, could be strong enough to push you out of your lane. Be prepared for a sudden gust of wind as you pass large vehicles. Keep both hands on the steering wheel to help you keep full control. 35. Your car needs to pass an MOT test. What may be invalidated if you drive the car without a current MOT certificate? A. The vehicle excise license road tax. B. The vehicle service record. C. Your insurance. D. Your vehicle registration document. Correct answer. C. Your insurance. Explanation. If your vehicle requires an MOT certificate, it's illegal to drive it without one and your insurance may be invalid if you do so. The only exceptions are that you may drive to a pre-arranged MOT test appointment or to a garage for repairs required for the test. 36. What does driving a vehicle with anti-lock brakes allow you to do? A. Brake harder because it's impossible to skid. B. Drive at higher speeds. C. Pay less attention to the road ahead. D. Steer and brake harshly at the same time. Correct answer. D. Steer and brake harshly at the same time. Explanation. If the wheels of your vehicle lock, they won't grit the road and you'll lose steering control. In good conditions, the anti-lock braking system, ABS, will prevent the wheels from locking and you'll keep control of your steering. In poor weather conditions or on loose surfaces, the ABS may be less effective. 37. In which conditions are your anti-lock brakes most unlikely to prevent skidding? A. At night on unlit roads. B. In foggy conditions. C. On dry tarmac. D. On loose road surfaces. Correct answer. D. On loose road surfaces. Explanation. Anti-lock brakes may be ineffective on gravel or loose surfaces. They may also be ineffective in very wet weather. When water can build up between the tire and the road surface, this is known as aquaplaning. 38. On which occasion should you inflate your tires to more than the normal pressure? B. When the roads are slippery. C. When the tire tread is worn below 2 mm. D. When the vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes. Correct answer. A. When carrying a heavy load.
Explanation. Check the vehicle handbook. This should give you guidance on the correct tire pressures for your vehicle and when you may need to adjust them. If you're carrying a heavy load, you may need to adjust the headlights as well. Most cars have a switch on the dashboard to do this. 39. You're driving on a motorway. When can you use hazard warning lights? A. When the vehicle is following too closely. B. When you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. C. When you're driving on the hard shoulder. D. When you're towing another vehicle. Correct answer. B. When you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. Explanation. Briefly using your hazard warning lights will warn the traffic traveling behind you that there's a hazard ahead. This can reduce the chance of vehicles crashing into the back of each other. 40. You're driving at night with your headlights on full beam. A vehicle is overtaking you. When should you dip your lights? A. As soon as the vehicle passes you. B. Before the vehicle starts to pass you. C. Only if the other driver dips their headlights. D. Sometime after the vehicle has passed you. Correct answer. A. As soon as the vehicle passes you. Explanation. On full beam, your lights could dazzle the driver in front. Dip your lights as soon as the driver passes you and drop back so that the dip beam falls short of the other vehicle. 41. You're driving down a long, steep hill. You suddenly notice that your brakes aren't working as well as normal. What's the usual cause of this? A. Air in the brake fluid. B. Badly adjusted brakes. C. Oil on the brakes. D. The brakes are overheating. Correct answer. D. The brakes are overheating. Explanation. This is more likely to happen on vehicles fitted with drum brakes but it can apply to disc brakes as well. Using a lower gear will assist the braking and help you to keep control of your vehicle. 42. What can a loose filler cap on your diesel fuel tank cause? A. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. B. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. C. It can make the engine difficult to start. D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. Correct answer, D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. Explanation, diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of a dry spell of weather, the road surfaces may have a high level of diesel spillage that hasn't been washed away by rain. 43. You've just driven out of fog. What must you do now that visibility has improved? A. Keep your front fog lights switched on. B. Keep your rear fog lights switched on. C. Leave your fog lights switched on in case the fog returns. D. Switch off your fog lights. Correct answer. D. Switch off your fog lights. Explanation. You must turn off your fog lights if visibility is more than 100 meters, 328 feet. Be prepared for the fact that the fog may be patchy and you may need to turn them on again if the fog returns. 44. What qualifies you to supervise a learner driver? A. You must be an approved driving instructor. B. You must be at least 21 years old. C. You must have held a license for at least a year. D. You must hold an advanced driving certificate. Correct answer. B. You must be at least 21 years old. Explanation. Learner drivers benefit by combining professional driving lessons with private practice. However, you need to be at least 21 years old and have held your driving license for at least three years before you can supervise a learner driver. 45. You're planning to tow or a caravan. Which of these will be the biggest aid to vehicle handling? A. A jockey wheel fitted to the tow bar. B. A stabilizer fitted to the tow bar. C. Anti-lock brakes fitted to the towing vehicle. D. Power steering fitted to the towing vehicle. Correct answer. Be a stabilizer fitted to the tow bar.
Explanation. Towing a caravan or trailer affects the way the towing vehicle handles. A stabilizer device is not designed to overcome instability caused by incorrect loading but it can give added security in side winds and from buffeting caused by large vehicles. 46. You claim on your insurance to have your car repaired. Your policy has an excess of £100. What does this mean? A. The insurance company will pay the first £100 of any claim. B. You'll be paid £100 if you don't claim within one year. C. You'll have to pay the first £100 of the cost of repairs to your car. D. Your vehicle is insured for a value of £100 if it's stolen. Correct answer. C. You'll have to pay the first £100 of the cost of repairs to your car. Explanation. Having an excess on your policy will help to keep the premium down. However, if you make a claim, you'll have to pay the excess yourself, in this case £100.47. You're in a tunnel, your vehicle is on fire and you can't drive it. What should you do? A. Leave the engine running. B. Stay in the vehicle and close the windows. C. Switch off all of your lights. D. Switch on hazard warning lights. Correct answer. D. Switch on hazard warning lights. Explanation. It's usually better to drive a burning vehicle out of a tunnel. If you can't do this pull over and stop at an emergency point if possible. Switch off the engine, use hazard warning lights, and leave the vehicle immediately. Call for help from the nearest emergency point. If you have an extinguisher it may help to put out a small fire, but don't try to tackle a large one. 48. You're carrying a child in your car. They're under three years old. Which of these is a suitable restraint? A. A child seat. B. An adult holding a child. C. An adult lap belt. D. An adult seat belt. Correct answer. A. A child seat. Explanation. It's your responsibility to ensure that all children in your car are secure. Suitable restraints include a child seat, baby seat, booster seat or booster cushion. It's essential that any restraint used is suitable for the child's size and weight, and fitted according to the manufacturer's instructions. 49. You're parked at the side of the road. You'll be waiting some time for a passenger. What should you do? A. Apply the steering lock. B. Switch off the engine. C. Switch off the radio. D. Use your headlights. Correct answer. B. Switch off the engine. Explanation. If your vehicle is stationary and is likely to remain so for some time, switch off the engine. We should all try to reduce global warming and pollution. 50. What should you do as you approach a long road tunnel? A. Chain down to a lower gear. B. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. C. Put on your sunglasses and use the sun visor. D. Turn your headlights onto the main beam. Correct answer. B. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Explanation. On the approach to tunnels, a sign will usually show a local radio channel. This should give a warning of any incidents or congestion in the tunnel ahead. Many radios can be set to automatically pick up traffic announcements and local frequencies. If you have to tune the radio manually, don't be distracted while doing so. Incidents in tunnels can lead to serious casualties. The greatest hazard is fire. Getting an advance warning of problems could save your life and others.